Hi, People's Church. My name is Jean Beni. Hi, People's Church. My name is Carol, and I also lead praise and worship at Cornerstone. Hi, my name is Xavier Chisina, and I'm one of the song leaders here at Cornerstone Church. People's Church, very, very soon, we'll be joining with your wonderful worship team, ushering you into the very presence of God. Clap a little louder than before I want to sing a little louder than before oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before oh. yeah. I want to shout a little louder than before
Good day and welcome to our People's Church at Home service. I'm glad that you are able to connect with us today. My name is Eugene Maswangani and I'm your host. Firstly, I'd like to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for today, I'd like to discuss or share with you a memory verse um, that I did with my church life group titled Assurance of Answered Prayers. And we'll be looking at the memory verse from John 15, verse 7. And it reads as follows. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. John 15, verse 7. In the memory verse for this week, Jesus was speaking to his disciples the night before his crucifixion. In this last conversation with them before his death, Jesus assures them that their prayers would be heard and answered. He gave them two conditions for answered prayer. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. To abide is to stay or remain in a particular place or position. In this verse, Jesus was talking about the disciples remaining or staying in close relationship with himself and his word was to do the same to them or in them. The result would be that their prayers would be answered. Now the worship team will lead us into a moment of worship. lost but he brought me through his love for me yes his love for me will the sun set free always free indeed I'm a child of God yes I a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I'm a child of God. Free at last. Free at last. He has ransomed.
We greet you in the name of Jesus. We have yet another opportunity to be participants in the work of God by giving into the kingdom, by supporting the work. We've got a lot of exciting things happening in people's church. We have a lot of things which are planned and we are going to need your support. We're going to need you to come along to support the work. And remember when you support the work, you support yourself. Because the church becomes strong, your family becomes strong, you become strong. You know, the Bible says we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing with us when we go. That's what the Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 7. So let's give into the kingdom. Let's, let's be generous. Let's support the work. Let's send out missionaries. Let's establish churches. Let's see the church growing in, in numbers and also in quality because we are participants. Uh, Paul said several times to different congregations that uh, how will they go if nobody sends them? So how will the work be done if we don't support those who are called to do the work? Come along and support us by giving to People's Church to give into this ministry. And may God bless you. Hi there, I'm Debbie, and today I am your news reader. We'd like to thank you for joining our church service today, and we hope that you're enjoying it. Now, looking at what's happening in the life of the church. Good day, church. Christ, our Lord and Savior, led by example. Several times in scriptures, you will read that he went out to pray. So it is also important for us as believers, as his followers, to spend time in prayer. Church, I'm quite excited about our Tuesday morning dawn prayer meetings. I would like to invite you to join us every Tuesday morning between 5 and 6 as we cry out 
and lift our voices up to our Heavenly Father between 5 and 6 every Tuesday morning. To be able to join us, please contact me on the number that is flashed on the screen now. Contact me on this number so that I can send you the link so that you are able to join us as we pray together every Tuesday morning between 5 and 6. A praying church is a victorious church. You are furthermore reminded of our Wednesday prayers, which take place from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And please remember to pre-book for physical attendance. Good morning, People's Church. We are happy to announce that Designed Youth Ministry will be back soon. Watch this space for more announcements. And we are going to hit the ground running with a conference hosted by Cornerstone for the Youth. It's called Game Changers. Please watch the video for more information. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We are excited to announce the men's conference, which is taking place on the 23rd of October, which is a joint initiative between Cornerstone Church and People's Church. We're inviting all men to be part of this conference. It will be a Saturday. This is a conference that you don't want to miss in terms of its content and the speakers that we're going to have there and especially to have you there as one of the participants and attendees. We invite you, come and join us in the name of Jesus. This will be a virtual conference. You can attend it anywhere you are, in the comfort of your home. So we're inviting you, come along and be part of what God is doing in Cornerstone and People's Church. God bless you. Now moving on to our AGM. You are reminded that immediately after the service, we will have a short break of 10 minutes for some quick refreshments, and thereafter, we will commence with the AGM. Church members are welcome to attend this meeting. Whereas church online is great, feel free to come and join church in person. Lastly, to stay connected, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at People's Church PLK and like and subscribe our YouTube at People's Church PLK. Do you enjoy the rest of the service? Church, please help me as we welcome our senior pastor, Dr. Elijah Matlangu, to minister God's word to us. Thank you very much, Brother Eugene, for those kind words of welcome. I say to you today, welcome to People's Church Online. What a privilege, what an opportunity for me to bring the word of God to you. If you have been following us on social media, you'll be aware that our theme for this year is built to last. And over the past few Sundays, we have been developing the title or the theme rebuilding and reading largely from the book of Nehemiah. So today I wish to bring this series to conclusion. And my theme today is defeating the enemy called average. You will be challenged today by God's word that it's time for you to defeat this enemy called average. I read a true story of a 12-year-old boy who lived in the 19th century and to be precise in the 1880s in America in a little town. This boy never saw a circus, never visited a circus in his life. What 
a delight. What an excitement for him to learn that at last a circus show is coming to his town. His granddad gave him money to attend. And this particular Sunday morning, he went, he attended this circus for the very first time in his life. Now, during those days, this is what happened. There was what they called a parade. It was a preliminary show before the real thing. So, this boy attended this parade for about an hour. He was so excited and he ran back home and told his granddad, I saw a circus for the first time in my life. To his disappointment, his dad or his granddad told him, that is not the real thing. What you saw was a prelude, a parade to the real thing. This is true with many Christians today. Many Christians, many lives, many people have not experienced life to the fullest. In other words, they are living their lives, but they have not experienced life in the fullest. John Mason wrote a book. The name of the book is An Enemy Called Average. And in his book, he says, this quote, people are born as originals, but die as carbon copies of themselves. He says, God has given us our lives as originals, but we live even die as carbon copies of what God had meant us to be. Somebody might say, come on, pastor. This is how life is. Life is like that. There are people who are on the unfortunate side of life. John MacArthur disagrees, for he says, no human being is ever conceived outside God's will. He continues to say, life is a gift from God to, the, to be lived to the fullest. We read also in the Bible some characters who refused to live their lives in an average manner. Caleb is one of them. When the average minded people saw in the promised land Amongst the spies, they saw the fortified cities. They saw the giants, the sons of Anak. We read in Numbers 13 verse 30 that Caleb silenced them. And he said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. Arnold Schwarzenegger says the worst thing you can be is average. Henry Ford says if you think you can do a thing or you think you cannot, you are right. In other words, the word of God is encouraging us today that it's God's will, it's God's plan about our lives to live our lives to the fullest. May God help us. Let us defeat this enemy called average. God has not created us like that. We read in Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image, in his likeness. God created them. Male and female, he created them. But when we read in chapter 2, it seems the picture becomes even more clearer of how God has created us. God did not create an average person or us to live an average life. We read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust 
of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Other versions are saying a living soul. Now the Hebrew expression of those last words, a living being is nefesh haya. Nefesh haya. Now literally, the word nefesh means to bring things into existence. It means speaking things into existence as God did. This is how he created us. In explaining it the other way, it is a creating spirit. It is an innovating spirit. In other words, God created man in his own image, in his own likeness to be like him. You cannot be a nephish and live your life in an average manner. Rick Warren says, you were made by God and for God and until you understand that, life will never make sense. Paul says in Romans 4 verse 17, like our father Abraham, we can call things which are not as though they are. Praise the name of the Lord. We read today from the book of Nehemiah. We are going to read few verses from this Old Testament book of Nehemiah during this time when the book of Nehemiah was written. The nation of Israel were at their lowest ebb. They were in exile. Now Nehemiah realized, he raised his hand, we cannot be as the nation of God to live our lives in an average manner as a nation. This is not what God has created us for. We, Nehemiah thought, we were born, we were created by God for a purpose, to be a witness to the world. He knew the promises of God to the children of Israel, how the Messiah was going to be born from this nation. He raised his hand that I'm going to make sure that the nation of God, the people of God are defeating the enemy called average. I've structured this message in four sub-themes. The first sub-theme is Nehemiah for him to succeed in contributing to the nation of Israel to defeat the enemy called average. He was passionate in prayer. The second Sub point is that Nehemiah prayed and this led to possibilities and opportunities for purpose. The third sub point is that in this quest to change the fortune of the children of God, the children of Israel, to defeat the enemy called average, he needed some resources, provision. Lastly, Nehemiah knew how to treat what I would refer to as player haters. Quickly, let us develop our message in these four sub-points. The first thing is that Nehemiah knew if you wish to defeat this enemy called average, you ought to be passionate in prayer. We find this in Nehemiah 1. Verse 2 to 4. A certain brother called Hanani comes to Nehemiah. Nehemiah asking him, how is Israel? How are the Jewish remnants, those who survived the exile? In verse 3, he answers, those who survived the exile are in disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem broken down. The gates have been burned with fire. Verse 4. When I heard 
these things. I sat down and wept for some days. I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. This is the genesis of defeating the enemy called average. We will never defeat this enemy if we are not passionate in prayer. I am bringing a collection of my own quotations. And this quotation about prayer, it goes like this. There is a mystical relationship or connection, connectivity between the believer, prayer, fasting, and the mediation of God's power and enablement. What do I mean? When you say something is mystical, it doesn't really mean it's something mysterious. But it means I do not understand how it happens. What I say is that there is connection between prayer and action. When I pray, even if I do not understand, but there is connection between my prayer and what is taking place. Last Sunday, Mrs. Macquarella read from Exodus 17, verse 12. The children of Israel are fighting against the Amalekites. They are fighting and Joshua is leading them. And as long as Moses was praying for the battle, the children of Israel were winning. But when he got tired, lowered his guard, lowered his hands, Joshua and her came and lifted the hands. When the hands were lowered, they were losing. When the hands were lifted, they were winning their battle. Nehemiah knew in order for us to defeat this enemy called average, we should pray passionately. Andrew Murray says, we must begin to believe that God in the mystery of prayer has entrusted us with a force that can move the heavenly world and can bring its power down on earth. Woodrow Crawl says, fervent prayers produce phenomenal results. So that's the first step to defeat the enemy called average church. We ought to be praying. We ought to regard prayer not as a program of the church but as a lifestyle. Number two, possibilities, opportunities for purpose. As we are praying, as Nehemiah was praying to defeat the enemy called average, God opens doors of possibilities and opportunities. We read this in chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. It's in a banquet. And the king sees that Nehemiah is somehow upset. And he asks him, what is the matter? And in his response, God opens doors for him to go and make a difference in Israel. We read in verse 6. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked him, How long will the journey take and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me. So I set a time. God opens doors of opportunity to fight the enemy called average. I got this quote from Spiritual inspiration dot quotes. When God sees you doing your part, developing what he has given you, then he will do his part opening doors which no one will shut and closing doors no one will open. Brothers and sisters, as we passionately pray to defeat the enemy called average, God opens doors for us. We read also in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel was not satisfied about the process of the Israelites going back to rebuild their city, their walls, and the temple. He set himself to pray. And as he was praying for 21 days, 
an angel came to bring the answer to him and this angel tells Daniel in verse 12 do not fear Daniel for from the first day that you said your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God your words were heard and I have come because of your words God open door that when we read in chapter 11 we have the full story of God opening doors for more exiles to go back God will open doors for us God will create opportunities for us to defeat the enemy called Avery. the third point provision and resources in his quest to fight the enemy called average Nehemiah needed opportunities but also he needed resources provision we find this in chapter 2 verse 7 to 9 furthermore I said to the king if it pleases the king let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah and a letter to Asaph the keeper of the king's forest that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel which pertains to the temple for the city wall and for the house that I will occupy and the king granted them to me according to the good hand of God upon me verse 9 then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters now the king had sent captains of the army and his men with me when we set ourselves to fight the enemy called average God will provide he provided letters it wouldn't be easy for Nehemiah to go through certain regions so the king in Pasha gave him letters not only that he was granted resources timber wood to go and rebuild the temple of the Lord but also the king granted him some army husband to protect him against some hostile people some hostile kings God will provide God will give us resources when we set ourselves to fight to defeat the enemy called average Jewel Austin says God knows the dreams and desires of your heart in fact he gave them to you he will order your steps and take you where you need to be shout the name of the Lord when we passionately passionately pray God opens doors possibilities but God gives resources brethren brothers and sisters my last point is entitled player haters or put the other way around destructors there are people I want to call player haters they are not playing the game they are not fighting the enemy called average but they are there to distract us they are there to discourage us in what we are doing in other words they are opposing the work of the Lord here is the equation opportunity plus opposition equals to God's will now people do not hate you people do not criticize you people do not scandalize you for doing bad things but sometimes when we are doing great things for God 
people do behave like that. This will happen. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10, when Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, official head of it, in other words, they heard that Nehemiah and his group of people have come to defeat the enemy called Average, to rebuild the wall, to rebuild their city and the temple. They were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. There you are. They haven't come to do wrong things. And they set themselves up to oppose them. We read in chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. But it so happened when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall. That he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burned. Now, Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him. And he said, whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. There you are. These are player haters. These are people. When we fight the enemy called average, they point fingers at us. They don't like what you are doing. I like what Nehemiah did. He did not respond to Sanballat and Tobiah. Now, I'm going to make a statement which is profound from Ewan Rommel. He says, do not fight a battle if you don't gain anything by winning. There are people who are fighting battles and they want to win their battle. But after winning that battle, you are going to gain nothing. I don't want to fight such battles battles i want to fight a battle where i'm going to gain something maybe to the glory of god nehemiah did not even respond to those accusations i want to conclude my message we are challenged today as individuals we are challenged today maybe as families as the church to fight the enemy called average to fight mediocrity john mason says rising above mediocrity never just happens it's always a result of faith combined with works faith without works is like gold within the earth it is of no value until it is mined ralph valdo emerson says do not follow where the path may lead Go instead where there is no path and leave your trail or your legacy there. We are not going to do things that we normally did. In other words, we want to leave a legacy for us, for our children and for the church of Jesus Christ. I read a story, a true story from a farmer's magazine. It goes like this. A farmer who was farming in chicken, live chicken. He picked up one day an eaglet which fell from the nest. And he took it to the other chickens. He grew this eaglet like a chicken. And it was growing. Grew up. One day a scientist passed by and saw that this eagle was just scavenging 
was just living like other chickens. And he said to the farmer, why do you do this? Why do you grow an eagle with the chickens? He says, picked it up as an eaglet. So, he's no longer a, an eagle. He is a chicken. But the scientist says, no, I'm going to show you. Picked up the bird, threw it into the air, tried to flip its wings, but it could not make it. He tried several times until suddenly, until ultimately the DNA, the way it is wired, started to show up. And the eagle did not come down because it was, it is not wired like that. It flew into the air. And the scientist says, I told you, he is not a chicken. He is an eagle. Brothers and sisters, we are wired differently. We were not wired to live lives that are average. To live our lives in mediocrity. Even if maybe you find yourself scavenging and walking with chickens. I want to tell you today, you were not wired like that. You are an eagle. Isaiah says, in Isaiah 40, verse 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount high as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Church, we are going to make it. We were wired not to be chickens, not to be average, not to be mediocre. May God richly bless you as we pray and as God opens doors, as God gives us resources, as we ignore those who oppose us and continue with God's work that he has entrusted upon us. May God richly bless you. Are you not excited? I'm excited over you. Thank God for the reading. Thank God for, for the preaching of his word defeating the enemy called average i want to believe god's word has blessed you today whoever you are maybe you're over there maybe you're invited to listen to this message and you don't know christ as lord and savior i pray today that you take a step of faith Jesus Christ is our Savior. It's not about religion. It's not about church. But it's by, it has to do about your encounter with him. Pray this prayer very short with me. Lord Jesus, I pray today. I come to you just as I am. I cannot save myself. Today, I open my heart. I open my life come into my life and give me a new beginning. I pray in Jesus name. A number is flashed on the screen. Please do contact us. Do speak to us and we will make sure that we help you further. God richly bless you. Maybe you're a child of God. You have been living your life in an average manner. God help you to defeat, to fight this enemy called average. Amen.